So I'll just say who I am and Hey, I'll give you a quick elevator pitch. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. All right, ready. Hey, how you doing? My name is Tyson Knight. I am a street artist from Palm Springs, California. And I'm here to do an interview with Naomi. And um, let's go. Cool, awesome. So what inspired you to get into art? I looked at some of your pieces and you have some dope pieces. So yeah. what inspired you? You know what, when I was a kid, I was just inspired by, um, I would go to New York City with my parents because I grew up in New Jersey. So I would go to New York with my parents and ride the train. I would see like all these like colorful, you know, like graffiti on the sides of the trains and that fascinated me a lot. And I was like, man, I wonder if I can do that. I was a really young child, so man, I wonder if I can do that. I didn't know how to get like materials or anything like that. And um, when I got a little older, maybe about 15 or so, I figured out it was spray paint and all these different like graffiti tools you can use. So me and my friends would try to duplicate that. Um, Cause I was in New Jersey, when I was from New York, I would try to duplicate that, you know, in buildings and stuff around my area. Gotcha. And um, that's how I kind of got started. And I actually um, started making money in middle school by painting on jeans, like back in like, oh, back yeah, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> paint on jeans. Back then I think, like the mid nineties, I think, um, Black Bart Simpson was real big, and like any like black figures was like really, really big at the time. So like black love and all these different things. So I would get all the t-shirts and jeans from kids from school and just just be painting. No books in my backpack, just all <laughs> just all like clothes from you know, orders. I'm like, what are you doing to your room? And that's what I that's how I got started. Yeah. Cool, awesome. So do you have like a favorite thing that you paint or like do you have like any Kind of like, kind of some artists like they might like to paint portraits or so like do you have, do you have like a favorite niche or? Hmm. Um, you know what? I don't know if I have a favorite that I paint. I do know I love to use a lot of bold, bright colors. Um, I think I painted one year. I painted the um, African Queen that I was really excited about. And that African Queen picture actually, um, I placed second in the state of New Jersey at the age of 15. Oh, that's really and that sent me to the Nationals in Houston, Texas. So that was probably like my introduction into like, oh, this art could probably take me somewhere. So if I had to say one painting, it was probably the painting of that African queen that I did yeah, when I was a child. Cool, awesome. So I know you just got back from Palm Springs. Yeah. And I know you're doing, I know you're doing like a project out there, right? Yeah, yeah. So how, how did that go? And what was the project? Um, the project was actually, it was a street bench pilot project, which um, the city, uh, the Palm Springs um, Art Commission, contacted me on Facebook and said, hey, we got you in mind for an actual project that we had you in mind for. Would you mind sitting and talking with us and, and going over the details of it? I said, sure. So I met them at Starbucks downtown and they walked me around and said, hey, these are the city benches, the street benches we're gonna paint it. We want to put icons on there and we want your style. So I went back home, came up with some sketches, submitted it to them, they gave me a green light. So I started that project in, I think August, First, I started that project in like 122 degree weather, right? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's hot, hot spring. as hell. Um, and I finished, maybe I finished around um, end of September. And um, yeah, it was a little bit of a project. We got a lot, a lot of good feedback on it and actually helped propel my career even even more um, to where I'm going now in the different stratosphere of going forward. So I think that's pretty cool. So that's a really cool project. And um, I'm actually, they're, now that the project did so well, they actually want me to um, be the lead, of pro lead artist on a project to do the rest of the benches. So that should That's be really right. cool. Yeah. So all yeah. throughout downtown Palm Springs. Yeah. Or so it should awesome. be. What will what, 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 what happen is we will bring in different artists, so it won't all be the same. So you see okay, different you. You know, variations of different type of artists that work, which would be cool. So people, whatever benches, set of benches you like, you will be able to track that back to your favorite artist. Okay, cool, nice. Yeah. And then speaking of projects, I know that you have one coming up next month, right in Miami. Yes. <laughs> so can you, yeah. so yeah. like, what are your expectations for that one? And then what are you looking forward to? Um, you know, this is, that's been a, that's gonna be interesting for me because that's the first time that I'm actually going to be uh, displaying my work in a big, big arena like that, um, where 40,000 people would be down there. And, um, Right now, I've been blessed to get a lot of publicity from my, out of Miami. So they're showing me a lot of love for some of my artwork is concerned. And I think that's gonna be a really, really, really good thing for me in my career going forward. So Red Dot is like like the mecca of like Art Boss of Week, and it's like real big. That's like a big thing. And it hasn't sunk in yet how major it is for me, but um, 
I'm just looking forward to getting down there and you know seeing what I can do and the opportunities that's there for me. So I'm just gonna take them as a come and just, just cool. keep going. So, so Red Dot is like the like the fashion week of the arts. Yeah, like the, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's like okay. that. It's like a big deal like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Gotcha. And then can you t talk to us a little bit about the documentary that you did, The Rise, and it was like, street. It was, uh, it was the homeless street arts. Yeah. I actually so I did two documentaries. Okay. Um, so what inspires you? What's the inspiration behind that? Okay, so the first one I did was called The Art of Hustle Street Art Documentary, which um, I just had an idea because I'm thinking, I was thinking to myself, like, I was sitting home one day just watching Netflix, and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, wait a minute, how can I get myself, you know, recognized as an artist? I didn't know that um, helping other artists will in turn help me as an artist. So I had to watch these, these different documentaries, art documentaries on Netflix, and I just got inspired to you know, create a documentary, right? Yeah. I didn't know how I was going to do this, but I was going to create this documentary. And um, everything fell in place for me. I found an editor. Uh, I found uh, a guy that actually went to San Francisco Film School. He's working as a uh, bartender in downtown Palm Springs, but he had enough uh, know-how and, and education on filmmaking to help me on this project. So I sat down and wrote out a uh, treatment, and um, I started filming. And I was, able to, I was blessed to get other artists involved. Now, that documentary took me all the way to Grenoble, France, uh, for a street for a street movie fest there. Um, I got contacted by um, street movie fest out of Grenoble, France. So that that actual documentary took me all the way to France, and actually won for that film. Actually won the Oregon Documentary Film Festival Best Feature Film for the year 2018 on that project. Now, how I got to the Art of Hustle Home the Street Artist documentary is because one of the artists that I featured in my first documentary, uh, his name was Scratch, he was a homeless artist. And when I showed that documentary, the audience was very intrigued by Scratch. So I said, hmm, another light bulb went up my, in my head. I said, wait a minute, my first film I helped document other artists as well as myself, if I could still keep this momentum going and actually document homeless street artists, it's no, it's, it's no wonder where this thing can go, right? right? So I went back home and said, you know what? I still have footage from some of the homeless artists that I, um, I uh, documented from my first film. I said, why don't I just take that footage and just you know, keep building on that? So then I went on another trek to actually do the street, homeless street artist documentary, which I made into a short. So I was able to get Scratch again, uh, a, a guy named Will, and Catherine. And they all were these three homeless artists living in a section of Coachella Valley in Palm, in Palm Springs. And um, I was able to get all that footage and cut the next film. And then that film actually uh, got accepted to some film festival and actually won an award um, last month for the Marina Del Rey Film Festival. I won Best Director for a documentary short. So, um, I don't know, it's just been, it's been blessings after blessings, you know, and right. I, I just learned that uh, within my talents, helping other people um, is probably one of the best rewards I got from that. So awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's good that you're very community oriented. Yeah, that's yeah, really I, I think good. so, yeah. It's very important to, uh, to make your community better and give back. I, I think that's very important to do. Absolutely. Awesome. And then, speaking of projects, do you have, what, what new projects do, do you have coming up within the next year? With well, next year? Ooh, I've got a couple, a couple good things coming up. Um, also, I have a, actually I just um, went in a partnership with the uh, gallery, um, Robert James Gallery, and we're doing a, a collection of uh, remakes of masterpieces and they're called mashup masterpieces and we're doing all these different uh, interpretations of, of these old masters uh, i just did one grant wood uh, american gothic and um, james abbott the whistler's the whistler's mother so we're doing all these different conversions of these masters and we're going to present those to the public and i was uh, blessed enough to get um, my artwork featured a Picasso piece that I did called La Revie, actually featured on a billboard in, in Times Square, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I have that going. Uh, also, I have, um, I'm going to be uh, mentoring in uh, Marietta at the Juvenile Detention Center there okay, with the boys. Right. So I got a lot of good things <laughs> coming up. So I'll just That's get prepared. Awesome. Uh, 2020 is going to be um, a really, really amazing career for me and also all the people I can touch and help at the same time. Cool. Please stay busy. So, yeah. we know, so we know that you're an, an artist, a filmmaker, you like to help out with your community. So mm -hmm. what's, 
So what would be one unknown fact that most probably would not know about Tyson? Unknown fact? Hmm. Well, this would be unknown fact. Um, really, I've, a lot of people don't know. I'm really actually a nerd at heart. Like, I'm, I can't, like, I'm like very nerdy. Like, um, I like to collect baseball cards, read comic books. Um, I'm, I'm very nerdy in that way. Like, I, yeah, like I am a geek when it comes to stuff. <laughs> Um, that's probably a little known fact. Everybody think, oh, you smooth and cool. Ah, that's whatever. But yeah, but you know, I get a lot of my inspiration just from um, comic books and just just being nerdy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. if, there is, if there's one artist that you could that you could like work with, who would you want to work with or partner on a project with? Um, dead or alive or, or yeah, alive. Or, yeah, alive. Could, yeah, we could do, or we could do both. Um, alive and then somebody that you know you wish. okay one person i would want to work with is john michelle basquiat um, just based off his his um how he goes about his work and how serious he takes his work I, i've heard stories that he would hang out all night and go home and still you know paint and i heard he was very quick with his artwork as well if that had to be somebody that was alive i would probably that would be a tough one for me um, i would probably i'm I would probably want to work with Banksy. And the reason for that is just the mystique that he brings to the table as far as knowing, not knowing who he is. I mean, I would like to, you know, pick his brain and figure out like, how was he able to keep that type of mystique and still have his artwork be so uh, prominent in our society. So those are two people I would work with, Banksy and John michel Basquiat, yeah. Cool, and then, so what, what's one piece of advice that you, that you'll give that you want to that you can give to upcoming artists who want to like get their work out there but maybe they don't know where to start mm -hmm. or just like a piece of advice on how to keep you know like artists motivated kind of sometimes yeah, you know motivation. the struggle yeah um you know the best advice i could give is um but i don't want to be cliche with when you give advice um i'll just take from from my experience would be if you have a certain style of artwork that you you like to do um, i think stick with that because i think what happens is as an artist we're very sensitive when it comes to critiques that's something you also got to get over you got to be able to take constructive criticism with your work but maintain the true essence of who you are in your work um, so the advice i would give is to believe in what you're doing um, if you think you're genre art is what you want to do and you enjoy doing that and I think you should stay on that just stay on that and you will find your audience you know and, and be patient um, you know things don't happen overnight especially as being an artist and, and as an artist you're always learning and you're always exploring um, I'll also tell artists to travel outside the US if you're a US citizen artist I would say travel outside the US uh, get to see different cultures and different different styles of artwork and, See if you can take any of those styles and mash it into your own style. So I would say travel, stay on your genre of art, keep the true essence of your artwork, and you'll find your audience. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome advice. And then how can people follow you? Well, you can follow me on uh, you know all the social media, right? <laughs> I'm really bad at social media, to be honest with you. I'm really bad at social media. But uh, you can follow me on social media. Uh, my handle is Tyson Knight, T-Y-S-E-N. A lot of people just put the O in there, but it's actually right. E, so it's Tyson Knight. Across all social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, obviously, TysonKnight.com, you can find me there as well. My email is there, so I'm really hard to find. You know, um, someone sent me a message, and they asked me for genuine advice, I will message back. I definitely will, yeah. Awesome, perfect. And then locally, if, if, so, if, like, if someone that's in Southern California wanted to check out your art, mm -hmm. where can they go to see your work? Well, right now, most of my artwork is online, on online galleries. Uh, we're working on getting into different uh, places here in California, but I do have artwork currently in Palm Springs at the Desert Art Center, uh, downtown Palm Springs. So if you're ever in Palm Springs, you want to see my artwork, um, you can go right to the Desert Art Center and I always have a piece displayed there that people can see. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tyson. Thank you. Appreciate it.